Last Friday at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles, Jon Stewart actually performed a stand-up routine. This was part of the Netflix is a Joke Fest, and he's drawn some headlines for some of the things that he said. For example, he criticized Joe Biden's age again and kind of criticized the backlash that he received for saying what we all are thinking about Joe Biden's age. But he also talked about hysteria over woke culture. And that, to me, is particularly interesting, and that's what I want to talk about today. Because as a comedian, what he says is, especially valid and long story short he basically says that this is much ado about nothing and all of the comedians who are whining constantly about woke culture and leftist stifling comedy it's all a bunch of nonsense so the hollywood reporter explains the comedian weighed in on anti-woke culture saying he was so fucking sick of the idea of go woke and go broke what are you losing you can't say anything anymore what do you want to say Stewart said, shut the fuck up. And by the way, the people who talk about anti-woke are the biggest fucking pussies you would ever find, specifically calling out the controversy surrounding Bud Light and its partnership with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. I'm just so tired of it. The woke shit. You lose nothing. I'm a comedian. I've lost two words in 35 years, he said of phrases that are no longer culturally appropriate for him to say. Honestly, are you that fucking unimaginative that you can't figure it out? Okay, this is why John Stewart is the GOAT. It's because he is able to adapt and speak the truths that nobody else wants to say. These comedians, they come out here and present themselves as truth tellers for saying what nobody wants to hear when they're all saying the same thing. John Stewart, however, is adapting and reading the room and understanding the moment. And he's saying all these comedians that are complaining in particular but in that last paragraph, it's all bullshit. They're crybabies. They're the ones who are being unimaginative. Now, he is not necessarily taking shots at any particular comedian, but I'm assuming a lot of comedians heard that and they felt pretty awkward after, for years, many of them have been talking about how comedy is under attack and their free speech is being stifled. He's just calling bullshit on that. And he's right. Now, this comes after Jerry Seinfeld blamed the extreme left and PC crap for supposedly killing TV comedy, which is such bullshit because when you have shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and South Park and so many others that are still on till this day, uh, well, I guess Curb isn't, but you know, they're beloved shows. They're very, very edgy, very offensive, but they are able to exist. It kind of defeats this whole, oh my God, comedy is being canceled. We can't say anything because of woke folks. No, you can make edgy jokes. It's just like what you say matters and you actually have to be funny and say something. But these comedians are too lazy to write better material, I guess. Now, I don't think that Jon Stewart necessarily was taking a shot at Jerry Seinfeld. I'm sure he wrote that before Jerry Seinfeld made his dumbass comments. But what Jon Stewart says here as a fellow comedian is really important because he's saying the onus is on comedians to make people laugh. You can't blame the audience for not laughing and assume that they're too offended by your edgy jokes. It's your job to know your core audience and write jokes that speak to them. If you can't do that, that's on you, not them. If they don't laugh, that's your fault. Because as Jon Stewart put it, he's lost, what, two words over 35 years as a comedian? I'm assuming those words are the homophobic F slur and the ableist R slur. If you can't make do with all the other words you have after that, I mean, that kind of speaks to your ability and talent as a comedian, does it not? Now, with respect to Jon Stewart, I'm glad that he made that point because he says he lost two words. But of course, as we can all tell, him not being able to say those two words specifically hasn't stifled his comedy in any way. He's as funny now as he's always been, if not better. But the difference between Jon Stewart and other comedians his age is that he's been able to grow and adapt. And that's important because at a certain point, new generations will find your stand-up and what was funny to your generation might not necessarily be so funny to their generation. Not just because your material is offensive or edgy, but because people just have different senses of humor. I mean, I'm a millennial and you can already see differences between my generation and Gen Z in terms of humor. So sense of humor is going to vary depending on the generation, depending on culture, and even depending on the particular period of time that we're all in and when somebody grows up. But rather than trying to understand younger generations and adjust their comedy to appeal to them, so many comedians these days just become curmudgeonly old assholes who blame their inability to make people laugh on everyone else being too triggered or some shit when that's just cope.
Now, what's compounding this issue that these comedians are all talking about with regard to woke culture stifling comedy is that they're all in an echo chamber reinforcing each other's bad ideas about the context within which they find themselves in. Rather than like trying to be introspective and realize we're all out of touch, they're all talking to each other and telling each other, no, actually, the kids are the ones who's wrong and we're all right. And that became especially clear to me uh, because I saw something on an episode of the last Club Random podcast with Bill Maher, another out of touch comedian. And he was, of course, interviewing Jerry Seinfeld and Seinfeld made a comment about a uh, or not about a recent segment, just about Bill Maher's new role segments in general. And what he said really stood out to me. So let's watch. I think what stand up is for you is what writing that editorial at the end of the show is for me. Oh, okay. That's what Well, I, that piece, I, I never, ever miss. Oh, thank for you. For the writing. Thank for you. For the flow of it. The consistency uh, is shocking. Your consi your level I've, of consistency I've, is, is shocking. Well, I'm, And uh, it, it's the best comedy monologue every week that anyone does. And you well, even make a point I, on top of being funny. Which oh, is, you know, usually a point no one else is making. Except every Fox News host. Bill Maher's recent new rule segments, by the way, include diatribes about how selfish and entitled anti-war college protesters are and why DeSantis was right about LGBTQ plus people being groomers. There's nothing subversive or edgy or funny or unique about Bill Maher's shtick. He's just a Fox News pundit, effectively, who tries to be funny. And throughout that interview, they were reminiscing about the good old days when people would complain less and whatnot. And it really explained so much because they're not only old and out of touch, but all of these old and out of touch comedians are continuing to jerk each other off about how right they are about everything and how wonderful their work is. But also, they've become insulated and they've put themselves in a bubble and they refuse to let anyone else kind of say something that resonates with them. It's just, no, I'm right, everyone else is wrong. And that is part of the problem. They're stubborn, they're digging their heels in, and rather than adjusting as Jon Stewart has, they're just saying, nope, we're right, everyone else is wrong. But I mean... It's just, it's natural to become out of touch as you grow older, especially if you're rich. But they refuse to listen. But I think that this camaraderie that they have with each other, that's kind of part of the problem. Not that camaraderie and friendship is bad, but it's because, you know, they're all in this echo chamber. This is why every fucking comedy special takes on the same tone these days, like Triggered by Joe Rogan or Cancel This by Roseanne Barr and Woke Up America by Rob Schneider. And it's also why they all keep repeating the same fucking pronoun joke again and again and again. They might think it's funny because they all encourage and validate each other, but nobody else thinks it's funny. In fact, I don't even believe that they think it's funny because how can you find the same joke that's been told again and again and again, funny. The same I identify as blank and my pronouns are X and Y. How can you find that funny if it's been told so many times? And do you not feel self-conscious as a comedian that you're perhaps stealing other people's jokes? That was originally a 4chan joke or a Reddit joke or some shit. And you dipshits keep stealing it and presenting it as comedy because you change the subject or you change like what you're identifying as. But it's the same fucking thing over and over again. It's unoriginal. It's boring. And nobody wants to hear rich people complain about how people with no money and no power are victimizing them somehow because they get offended by jokes when that's not really even happening. Right. So last week we talked about Jerry Seinfeld and his comments. I'll link to that video down below. And I pointed to a clip from 2015 when Jerry Seinfeld was on The Late Show with Seth Meyers or one of those guys. I think it was it was Seth Meyers. And the example that he gave of people who are offended by his jokes was a joke that he told about young people. They're just obsessed with their phones and they're scrolling on it like a, a gay French monarch or something. I don't remember the joke. But anyways, he said that nobody laughed and it was because he assumed that people were offended. He said that he felt their thoughts and that they felt like and he felt like they felt like he was being insensitive towards gay people and homophobic. But Nobody actually said that. Like, this was something that he made up. He assumed that that was what they were thinking, when in actuality, I think they just didn't find the joke funny at all. But because they didn't laugh, he assumed that it was because they were woke and triggered or some bullshit. So I'll conclude by repeating what I said about comedians in that video. So the problem isn't that people are offended. The problem is that comedians need to write better jokes because having some variation of the I identify as slash my pronouns are X and Y joke 
isn't funny. It's the same shit we've heard again and again and again. People aren't offended. They're just not laughing because you're not funny. And if you can't write better jokes that make us laugh, then I don't want to hear you whine about how you can't write edgy jokes no more because the problem is you're not writing good jokes. The problem is your jokes just aren't funny. That's a you problem. Now you can keep coping and seething about how everyone's too triggered by your edgy content when that's not actually the problem. You're not cutting to the core of the issue here. But I mean, this is what Jon Stewart is uh, getting at and it's why he's relevant and they're not so relevant. I mean, you can't really say that Jerry Seinfeld isn't relevant or Bill Maher because they still have programs and whatnot, even though they've been canceled. But Jon Stewart is still funny and regarded as one of the best comedians because he's able to adapt, because he's in touch with what people are saying, and because he changes with the time. That's how you maintain relevancy into the future. And in fact, you don't have to do that to be relevant because, again, there's so many comedians who are spewing the same bullshit and they're still relevant. But I mean, if you want to be regarded as a good comedian, which I think is the goal, then write better shit. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo